and then Shiva yelled like Jorge Jorge no 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 stop stop and then wait wait they are saying something and then what was happening what do you mean and then no no we cannot go there are, there are nine elephants <laughs> up on their house they've seen nine elephants earlier and it's like it's not a good idea that we go <laughs> I am Baiki Venki and this is the Working Athlete podcast. Here I talk to working athletes from all walks of life and experts from various sports to provide you with inspiration, training tips, time management and lifestyle advice. If this is something that interests you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any future episodes. Today's guest, Jorge Perez is a Colombian national living and working in Switzerland. He is a road and gravel cyclist who enjoys exploring new places on a bike. He reached out to me a couple of months ago asking for route recommendations for a week long cycling tour he wanted to do in South India. He was going to be in Bangalore for a couple of weeks on work and he wanted to use the trip to explore the region on his bike. In this episode we talk about his experiences of touring South India on the bike including the shock of his first ride in Bangalore traffic. It was a fun conversation that lets us see our own backyard through the eyes of a fellow cyclist from another land. I hope you enjoy this. Hi Jorge. Uh, Hi Becky. Welcome to the Working Athlete podcast. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for the invitation. Right. So, um, Jorge, you, uh, you know, how we kind of knew each other was uh, uh, you contacted me f- about a couple of months ago or uh, uh, something like that over email yeah. or actually from my uh, uh, website, I think, right? Yes, correct. Right. And uh, you reached out to me asking uh, that, you know, you were going to be here for uh, uh, for work and wanted to do a bike trip after uh, that. Exactly. Uh, you wanted some help with the routes, planning and stuff. So how, how did you kind of uh, get to know about me and stuff? I, I think it's, it's your reputation that precedes you. I was, uh, I was trying to contact, to find contacts in, in in India, I was trying to the plan the, the way I usually plan my routes was not working very well, so I didn't know what to do. And then I was reaching to friends. I was asking different people who may have been in India, who may have had contacts, and I was referred to a few websites. They told me try these people. Most of them, unfortunately, were in the north of India, uh, and I didn't want to travel so far because I'm in mean, Bangalore. I wanted to be in a, in the surrounding areas in South India. The work is in Bangalore. Yeah, my work was in Bangalore, so then I didn't I didn't want to move too far from here. And then some guys told me, well, we cannot help you there, but we know Venki, so reach out and maybe he will put you in contact with someone. So they gave me somebody gave, I I can track it. I know because I ask uh, uh, quite a few people. I know I have the emails, and one of them told me, reach out to this guy. Uh, he may be able to help. And uh, ah, here we are. Okay. That's, that's, that's how <laughs> nice. We, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So it, it was interesting. I, I, uh, we, um, you ended up coming a couple of weeks ago and uh, yes. uh, we went out. Uh, I, I think you you came in uh, and st- uh, late yeah. and or early morning, <laughs> whichever way you look at it, Saturday, four o'clock or something, you uh, had to sleep and you wanted to join uh, the 6.30, our usual uh, Saturday ride. Uh, but uh, you know it was it was tough. Very, it was tough. Uh, yeah. But uh, we managed to uh, you know get a ride in uh, yes, that day. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so up, what yeah. was the what was the experience like? <laughs> that was crazy. First time uh, riding in India. Yeah, that was crazy because uh, indeed I was uh, I was thinking yeah I will land around two thirty maybe I would be in the hotel by three three thirty. So something like that. I was hoping it would go fast, but it took me super long to leave the airport. I really went to bed super late. Um, and then I thought, there's no way I'm going to be up in two hours. But I, I did I did one thing is I mounted the bike before I went to sleep. So then I don't have excuses uh-huh. and I don't get delayed. So I mounted the bike uh, on the room. And then I thought, well, at least if I wake up out of a miracle, then I'm ready. 
And then uh, otherwise you told me that, yeah, maybe you will be able on your way back. You still wanted to do some more kilometers and then we will be able to meet then, which was very kind of you. And then on your way back gladly. And then I woke up uh, with the, with with the with with a severe headache and dehydration of the of the trip, the jet lag and the, the lack of sleep. And then I just saw my phone and I, I see these messages of yours. It's like I'm nearby. Like, oh, OK, then I just got a shower, got ready and went downstairs with my bike and there, there you were. So it was amazing. And then this was like I was just waking up and suddenly we're in the middle of Bangalore traffic. Oh, man, that was tough because it's like two, it's many things happening at the same time. First, you, you need to get used to, I mean, for me, coming from Western, it's like getting used to riding on the left side of the road, which is one thing. And then the other thing is handling the traffic, which could come from any direction. It's not, it could be on the right, but also be on the left. Uh, and and it's, it's very disorienting. So I'm very happy that you took me through all of that. It's like, I was, I was feeling like a kid taken by the hand because I think I wouldn't have dared to go alone uh, the first day. Yeah. When once I was there, it's like holy! I, I, it's just what is happening here, and then I needed a little bit of. Um, it's like in mountain biking, you know, like on the mountain biking, you always. Uh, I mean, I, I always sometimes follow a follow a wheel, right? And then you dare to do many more things than you would if you if you are you are alone. So it was exactly like that. I was just following. It's like well, then I just watch and then just repeat, try to do the same. And then, and then later on, the next day, I could eventually then ride alone. Like I was feeling like a big boy. <laughs> it was, it was my graduation. And then, um, but it was, yeah, it was quite experience. A lot of honks. <laughs> it's like it, it, usually when you when you honk where where I live, it's like somebody's doing ter something terribly wrong. And here it's like a sign of hey, I'm here. <laughs> and then hey, I'm here. And then everybody's like we are all here. It's like so it's. Uh, it's a little bit interesting uh, yeah. way of communicating, but that gives a little bit of, um, even despite the kind of the, this chaotic um, feeling of, of traffic, there is some kind of order and, and, and equilibrium. So it's kind of, it's a little bit passive aggressive, but at the same time, I, I didn't feel endangered. I, I needed to figure, to understand that first. Yeah. But before I understood it, it was like, uh, it was... Uh, it, it would be too much to, yes, yes. for the senses, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. So, for all the senses. Definitely. Yeah. So f from uh, from v where you are, uh, used to riding, which is Switzerland. Yes. Um, uh, you are a Colombian uh, living in Switzerland uh, and came here for uh, brief uh, work uh, and... You know, you decided to you know bring your bike along and experience uh, India through the bike. You know, what better way to uh, than you know on two wheels? Uh, yes, yes. So it was uh, it was great to kind of uh, you know uh, uh, it's always uh, this right. Uh, when I first went to uh, US, mm -hmm. it was like uh, thirteen years ago. I, I first looked at what are the, you know, cycling uh, stores, what are the cycling routes there, mm -hmm. uh, what is the cycling culture there. This is what I researched. Yes. Right? yes. So it is always easier to kind of uh, get to know a place through yes. your uh, passion. Exactly. You know, for cycling. So exactly. Uh, it was uh, it was my pleasure to kind of uh, be your guide there in, in uh, introducing India. Yes. <laughs> with a bit of a shocker uh, traffic. Yeah, no. Mayhem, but uh, yeah. That was not your fault, so for sure. <laughs> no. So, no, I, I, I totally understand and I agree. It's a uh, I like traveling with my bike because it's a I think it's a great way to meet places, and and to step a little bit outside of. Kind of the touristic comfort zone that that you i have the impression that before i was i was not traveling with my bike i will mostly visit the um, the main sites and the main places and then you are all often surrounded by tourists and then you, you experience things a little bit differently and i have not to make any judgments about that but uh i had the impression that once you are just riding the smaller roads of the city then you get a better impression of how is actually the life there how people actually live and interact and not just only the sites because i guess the size is not where where locals go to every day so then i wanted to get more of this this actual feeling of how is it to live in in bangalore and 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 to move around in bangalore 
so to to eat so all of these things I, I i then i like to go on a bike because then well you eat wherever you find a place and it's it's a little bit yeah it gives you a different uh view of everything and of course you can cover so much more distance within much less time as well and then yeah. it's easier to move around and not depend on public transport true, uh, true, so true. yeah so um uh, now before we kind of uh, you after uh, you were one week of work you took a one week break um, one week uh, of actually touring uh, you know the south southern india yes um, mm-hmm. but le- before we get into that i want to kind of get a sense of uh, you know what was your uh, uh, you know introduction to cycling growing up what is the experience and yeah. stuff like that well that's that's a long story but uh, my dad is um he used to be uh, a an, an amateur racer i think he was kind of on the way uh to get a to get pro or he wanted to get pro but i just learned recently that one of the reasons he couldn't go that far was the kids so so i i, I did not know that in so many details um and I and I understand uh, he he got kids very young and um, but anyway he always shared his passion with us, so he bought me my first bikes um, when I was I don't know very very young like I remember I must have been less than six years old five six maybe four, and uh, and and I used to to take all these bikes it was like uh, coaster brakes a single speed, and then I would just uh, I thought that I. I, I didn't understand what was the problem with the sidewalks. I thought that I was just able to go over them. So I would go really fast against the sidewalks and then break the forks of the bikes. So so I had a lot of experience breaking bikes when I was a kid. And later on, I would just keep going. But uh, I mean, different bikes. My, my dad was always very kind to us on, 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 on having a bike um, for us. But I was still living. I grew up in Bogota, in the capital of Colombia. So it's not at that time uh, when I was growing up, it was not such a big city for bikes and, and anyway I was a kid so I would not go and explore so far so I was kind of mostly staying inside the neighborhood and, and it stayed like that for very long then um, when I was uh, due to my high school and the way in my education I was very much into hiking because that was kind of an important part of our education uh, the respect for nature and and the protection of nature and 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 all the all the all the ecosystem and, and 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 so on so so i got into a lot of hiking so for many years i just just doing hiking because it was it was just easier and at that time without you know without google maps gpx and all of this so that was that was the thing i was i was doing so much only when i get to europe uh, during my phd uh, I got to, in the school I was studying, I got to borrow, I could borrow a bike for the whole summer. And I said, oh, that sounds nice. And a, ma- a nice enough mountain bike. Then I thought, well, that sounds amazing. It was a very rainy place. It was not a lot of, uh, there were not a lot of climbs, yeah, but it was it. super fun. It was, this was in Brittany in France. Uh, so Northwest of France mm-hmm. in a region nearby Brest, uh, in France. And, um, it, w- it, it was beautiful. It was very humid, but beautiful. And then. My, that was kind of my thing, kind of getting into mountain biking. I always like a little bit technical stuff. Um, then I moved to the south of France, which is then much sunnier, drier. And then and then I was continuing, but kind of not 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 hardcore downhill or anything like that. Just just technical mountain biking, uh, technical stuff without getting too fast or air or anything like that. And then I did that for some years. And uh, at some point I moved to Austria. And then for commuting, I started doing a lot of road cycling because it was just flat and, and I had to do 12 kilometers each direction every day. And then I thought, well, then I kind of want biking is not so efficient. So then I, I got a, a road bike and then from there it started taking over. And at some point uh, at that time, I also got kind of my first proper road bike and uh, I started exploring, traveling with a bike, like bike biking at the same time. Um, the day I got my, my first bike, like in Europe, everything is so small. I was living in Graz. I got, uh, the first day I got a bike, like, well, like, we'll just go follow this river. And I went to Maribor in Slovenia, which is 120 kilometers. It's not, I mean, it's not so far, but when, when it's your first bike and, uh, it's, it's like such an accomplishment, like, oh man, I could go to another country, 120 kilometers. And it just, I, it's the first day I have this bike. So it was like, a, just a world opening um and tons of opportunities and then i don't know just please tell me because i could speak uh then yeah uh, 
speak forever about that. Then I also, of course, got into gravel cycling. Um, for many years, I was thinking like, since I like so much mountain bike, and then like, sometimes I want to roll it. It's like sound like a perfect combination. Right. Until I finally did get my gravel bike. So actually, here I came with my gravel bike. I just put um, um, uh, 30C tires, kind of mm. slick tires, mostly because I, th- I knew I was going to be mostly in roads. Yeah. But uh, otherwise, I usually ride this more um, more for, for, for technical trail. I mean, I do mostly, yeah. Gravel stuff, riding? Gravel yeah. riding, yeah. Okay. So where you are uh, right now, uh, are there a lot of trails and gravel riding? Yes, it's a it's it's an amazing place to ride a bike. Yeah. yeah because you have a lot of so I, I live very close to the Alps. Hmm. So then um I like I do it's a little I do a lot of double tracks but also a lot of single tracks. So I do a lot of the easy mountain biking on the on the gravel. Uh because when you have in Switzerland when you have this um sign uh, trails that are for mountain bikes it's kind of for e-mountain bikes so they are fairly easy to do on on a gravel uh then then you have just so many options uh, and then yeah it's just wonderful then you awesome. have lakes and mountains and passes and you you just are so isolated in, in you can see just so many things in a day it's, yeah. it's really it's really wonderful and i like this also from the gravel this kind of being isolated being not necessarily with the cars or the people you're could be alone in a whole mountain so it's, it's really wonderful nice nice yeah. so uh, i just i'm just curious uh, you said uh, while pursuing your uh, phd what, yes what what was your phd in? so my phd kind of generally speaking is in microelectronics and telecommunications okay. um, so yeah. you're a doctor uh, doctor yoga Yes, okay. <laughs> yes, correct. <laughs> okay, nice, nice uh, to know that side of uh, things as well. Yes, so. That, so that's my technical stuff, right? So then I, I, I studied engineering. I became a, I got a PhD in microelectronics, and then I started working in a semiconductors company. Nice, nice, excellent. So, uh, uh, coming back to mm-hmm. the cycling, uh, yeah. You know, when we were riding, you mentioned, uh, you know, you did a bi- bike packing trip in Portugal. Uh, you know, yeah, a couple yeah. of months ago or something. Yeah, like that. So, four weeks ago. Yeah, four weeks ago. So, what you know, uh, do you do these uh, trips often? As 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 many holidays as I can afford uh, from my company. So, yeah, I do that. I do this very often. I mean, as soon as I get a chance. It, this time was Portugal mostly because it's winter in Europe, and then in Switzerland it's pretty cold, and then you cannot go very high. There was a lot of snow. And then I, I, yeah, well, Portugal is not so far. It's like a two hour flight and then it was 15 degrees warmer, uh, like Celsius warmer. So then, then, yeah, there's not like, no, it, it no, no, it, not even need to think a lot about it. And right. also tri- traveling within Europe is, is rather not um, too expensive, gladly. Right. Um, also many company, many airline companies now are also including the bike as a bag. So you don't even have to pay a lot for the bags, uh, for the bicycle transport. So so yeah, I was I was doing Portugal and yeah, but you know everything is so close and Switzerland being central is like a lot of opportunities. Like you're next to France, Italy, and yeah, so there there are a lot of opportunities. So um, coming to the uh, trip that you just completed uh, yeah. in India, yeah, right. What was the experience like from where to where did you ride? Yes, well, that was, uh, so, so the short version of that is I, we took with, uh, with, with Shiva, Shiva was my, my, my friend, my buddy uh, cycling with me. We didn't meet before we, we met kind of one day before the trip. So it was really weird because I never traveled. I never like share a trip with, with someone I just met. Unless it was kind of something a little bit organized and then, yeah, we're, we're part of an organized travel or something. Right. But, but this time it's like we're going together. So it was it was an interesting experience. And then uh, we left. Uh, we so he was basically a f- uh, work friend's friend. Correct. Or something he's, like a, he's a friend's friend. Yeah. And then we took, a f- we took a bus from Bangalore overnight. So as soon as I finished my job on Friday evening, I, we went to the bus station. Uh, we couldn't get a train. We got into the bus station, we got a sleeper bus, and then, no, it was not a sleeper bus, it was a normal bus, and then we, we went to, to Dindigal. Uh, so it was, we left around 10.30, we arrived there around 5, 5.30 a.m., and then we started cycling uh, towards the, the mountains. 
Um, and then, so we were in over three states, I understand. So uh, Karnataka, Tamil, Tamil Nadu, uh, Tamil Nadu and uh, Kerala. Okay. So my journey ended uh, two days ago in uh, Mysore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it ended, it, I was supposed to go a little bit uh, farther northwest and end up on the coast. But since my, my friend uh, had to quit, so Shiva, at some point he had to quit um, because of multiple uh, pain spots. And then I was a little bit sad that we couldn't have another, a little bit more of time. So I decided to reroute and stop cycling one day earlier so that we could meet in Mysore instead of where I was supposed to go. And uh, we could spend the day just chilling and, and, right. and not cycling. So how, how many uh, kilometers did you end up uh, riding? I, I haven't really added up, but it's something around, uh, with, with, with our rides in Bangalore, I think it's uh, 1,100. Uh, so, so just this trip was maybe 900 uh, or, or yeah, 950. Yeah. And then I think it had like, uh, I think it was like 16,000 meters. Wow. Or something like that. Over, over quite a bit of uh, climbing yeah there was that was the idea I, I mean I that was originally it was not my idea it was Shiva's idea because he he's he cycled many of that before but at, at a much uh, different pace much slower pace hmm. kind of alone on his own and then there were the things that he wanted to see again he, there were things that he hasn't seen uh, and then he prepared this amazing route. It was it's a gorgeous route, and I couldn't I could have never figured that on my own. He he selected amazing places, so 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 yeah. And all of, all of this was was on the hills, uh, protected forests, um, sanctuaries. So it was it was very special. Yeah. Nice. So what were some of the you know interesting experiences from these uh, rides? Oh man, it was it was so many things happening every day. They were. A lot of kind of almost surreal things. Uh, kind of one of the first coming to mind is one one night I was riding. So a lot of times people are coming talking to me. I cannot understand, but they chat and then they smile, they wave, "Hey, bro!" and then they just give a thumbs up. Uh, sometimes people just say things and well, but then I just continue, right? Uh, and this night we were, it was the second night we were arriving to, we we're supposed to arrive to Munar and we were just passing Pupara. And uh, and I hear a lot of women saying things. Uh, and I was tired. It was like 8.30 p.m. I was a little bit tired. So I just continued. I thought they are not saying something important. And she was uh, like a few meters behind me. And then Shiva yelled, like, Jorge, Jorge, no, 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 stop, stop. And then, wait, wait, they are saying something. And then, what was happening? What do you mean? And then, no, no, we cannot go. There are, there are nine elephants <laughs> up on the road. <laughs> They've seen nine elephants earlier. And it's like, it's not a good idea that we go. <laughs> so, oh, man, it's like, so glad that you were here and you understood. Because I, I was already past them, like, uh, a few a few houses from there. Right. And then, and then, if he had not been by, because he well, he's he's from he's from he's from Mysore actually, so he could on. I don't understand. It's a different language uh, right. in this place, but he could understand a bit and and at the basics to know that we should not go. Yeah, and that there were nine elephants. So so man, this this doesn't happen anywhere. <laughs> so these kinds of this this was a little bit uh, really unexpected. So well, we studied in Popara, but experiences like that were well, also trying to. Across uh, the tiger reserve, so I I crossed two tiger reserves, I mean, like I I didn't even think this I I didn't know this was on the route because I didn't know much about the route, uh, and one of them which I thought I was not going to be able to pass they actually led me through on the bike, which I was a little bit surprised so I don't know if that was a good thing or a bad thing, mm. uh, and another one two days ago I was crossing as well, and the policeman was a little bit I felt that he was hesitating. And then he said no, and I didn't insist. I got on a truck and I crossed on a truck. Right. Usually the Madhumalai, uh, uh, you know, Tiger Reserve, uh, they don't let you pass uh, on non-motorized vehicles. Yeah. Because of the, you know, it, it, the elephants, uh, elephant scare is quite real there. So usually they don't uh, allow us. So even uh, we do those, we actually pass through a couple of those uh, uh, you know, reserves uh, uh, during uh, 
a tour of nilgiris which we uh, do uh, you know in december mm-hmm. and even then uh, they uh, they allow during uh, they used to allow during that time uh, only with an escort vehicle uh-huh. so okay. one vehicle used to go ahead and kind of we, we follow that mm-hmm. and uh, actually last year because there was an elephant incident they did not even allow us you know just the, just the day before we were going there there was some uh, incident apparently which uh, wow. you know uh, so they did not allow us to e- go even with an es- escort vehicle so we had to kind of take a ferry and go wow yeah yeah so i mean to be able to ride through them is actually uh, you know a surreal experience because the the you know the sounds that are there yeah yeah and, yeah uh, no man so this was uh, totally surreal to me because it, i i was i didn't know if to keep an easy pace in case i need to sp- to sprint or if to sprint and, and cross as fast as possible i didn't know what to do but i was i was really all the time wondering is like what what is around the corner what is it here are, are there tigers are there elephants what is happening and then tigers are not so common uh, i guess yeah. Well, it was a tiger reserve, but it's it, what it, is, it is yeah. a tiger reserve, but they kind of, uh, at, at least in the daytime, they don't... Uh, I yeah. thought so. Like, they would yeah. be probably sleeping, uh, and they right. would not be, I, they wouldn't be but, but, so uh, interested on a yeah. sweaty color. Elephants, on the other hand, yeah. are, you know, they are quite active, uh, even During closer the to the roads and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So, what else, what... Uh, uh, so besides, the, well, in another place in, in uh, I think it's Muli. In Muli, um, I had the impression that there was some kind of this kind of Stelvio-like mount, a climb. Because Muli? In, in Muli, Muli, I think. Um, okay. I need to check them up. But uh, this is, I think there are like 48 or 50-something hairpins mm-hmm. uh, climb. And then... Um, is that a Koli Hills? Yeah, I need to check. Le- okay. I need to check on the, on the map. And then the thing is that um, I was supposed to cross, and then um, they, they, the guy the guy didn't didn't let me. So this is the place, Muli, ah, and okay. then it's okay. and then it's going up to uh, towards Uti, uh-huh. so to Kunda and then Uti. Oh, okay. So it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a tough climb. Right. So it's almost it's a, my Garmin was telling me it's uh, it's a little bit short of three thousand meter climb. Hmm. Which it, I I rarely have seen such long climbs, so I was really looking forward to that one, but it was also a climb. But at, at uh, I was at the bottom at eleven a.m. a little bit before eleven, so it would have been quite hard with the heat. Uh, at eleven, it was already maybe thirty-five degrees. Right. So it was going to be very tough. Um, and the policeman didn't. He was he was very rude. This one it was the only one that was very rude. And he didn't want to let me cross. Uh, he said no, and then not in a truck, not in nothing. Only locals can go. Mm-hmm. Um, so he sent me back, and then I was very disappointed because I I I really kind of rushed to be there at eleven, so that I could attack the climb early enough. And then I was back to to starting point, so I had to do a big reroute, like seventy kilometers, to be on another side of the climb. Uh, and then I was well. I think it took me at least three hours to be there. So then I was starting the climb at 2 p.m., mm-hmm. which was crazy hot, uh, which was another 25 kilometer climb with uh, 2,000 meters. Um, so it was it was quite. It was, I suffered a bit on that climb because right. of the heat. I'm guessing this is uh, you know through Kalahati you were not allowed, but you uh, ended up uh, uh, climbing towards the other side. Correct. Uh, which. Uh, which is a, a much more um, gentler climb, four five percent, but correct. longer. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So and that one ends in Kotagiri. Yeah. Yeah. All right. But Kotagiri was also an amazing place. Like all these places were amazing. They were absolutely amazing. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 So they. I mean, we. It. It is also a kind of annual pilgrimage for us. Uh, you know, to. Uh, ride in those areas Uh, uh, you know sometimes we tend to go to in the summers but uh, in december uh, is uh, you know it through a tour of nilgiris i have been doing in for the last 10 years that's 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 a a beautiful beautiful area to ride in Uh, amazing so 
so you kind of ended up uh, riding 900 kilometers uh, mm-hmm. over uh, what uh, see it was in total was 6 days six Saturday, days? Saturday Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday 6 days yeah wow a little bit more than 900 <laughs> and <laughs> some 16 thousand yeah. meters of uh, climbing yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> excellent what are uh, what are the takeaways from your uh, uh, you know experience in india uh, so I, I have a, I have quite a few actually. So first thing is that uh, planning is 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 really difficult. It is, I I think planning gravel rides is usually a difficult thing because it's like well you you don't have shops you don't have anything, but here even on the road I think it's it's quite difficult. It's on the on the good on the upside is it's easy, fairly rather easy to find uh, places to to get water, to get food. Uh, you need to like a lot of Indian food because you don't get a lot of options. But as long as you're fine with that, you, you get very good tasty food everywhere. Um, water, like climbs with watermelons and coconuts. That's just some unbelievably uh, uh, like delicious. Uh, so that's, that's very good. But planning is definitely uh, not straightforward, mostly because of, of this. So you cannot plan okay i will continue riding a few hours late because if you are a few hours late then maybe you are entering a a forest and then a protected forest uh so i was also turned over in kodai canal um trying to go to pundi it's like no you're too late now the forest is closed for the animals essentially and then you have to turn back so these things i never i never faced these kind of things before um so you need to really be aware of this of the time so that's one thing uh the second thing is that definitely you want to stick to the to the high places because of the heat they are also much more beautiful and interesting, I feel. Um, but w- sometimes you have to connect through through lower places, and then this is where it, it gets quite hot. On the other side, well, the roads, the ro- you need to be very. I think I think riding in India, you n- actually I think I felt like I needed this introduction that you gave me to ride in Bangalore because. A few times you're gonna cross like some cities or small towns where it's gonna be hectic in the downtown when you cross that part. Right. And then you need to be a little bit prepared to to, to all these things that are happening. So so that's uh, also important. And also when you're in the road, you now you know kind of this code of way of driving because uh, you I think you need to know that contrary to to other places in like mostly in in, in Europe, for example. You, you cannot assume that the, that the lane is yours when you're on it. So anything can come on your lane. So you, especially going downhill, uh, it's like, yeah, I cannot go too fast because I could have uh, a bus, a car, a motorcycle, a cow, anything could come on, on my lane. And it will be perfectly normal. It's not, it's not that they, they will honk. So, so <laughs> take away, like, I think you need a hunk for the bicycles here. <laughs> if you want to go road riding, you need, we need to invent something. There's a startup idea, that, like something very powerful to say, like, hey, I'm here. <laughs> and, 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 and we can communicate as well. So I, I actually, I, I um, during our rides in Bangalore, I started whistling because then I thought, like, yeah, th- that's my way to communicate. Because right. um, the little uh, bell from the bike is kind of ridiculous. It doesn't make any noise. Um and uh, and yeah, and it's it's a lot of beautiful places. I think uh, um, focusing on the positive, I think it's very nice. All these protected areas, all these plastic free zones, they are absolutely gorgeous. Uh, on the other side, there is some parts also that are a little bit polluted. There is some trash, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of trash in, in in the rural area. So so that's a little bit. Uh, there is a lot of contrast. So India is an incredibly amazing country, but also there is a lot of contrast. contrast. Yeah. So, so that's but I I'm also very familiar to that. I was born in Colombia, so it's the kind same kind of contrast as I could see when I was growing up. So I'm uh I'm I understand that. I just yeah, it's it's just it's in it, it was it's very similar. I'm not saying that it's still like that in Colombia. I don't know how it is because I haven't been there in, in quite some years. Um but uh but yeah it's 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 a lot of contrasts and it's a beautiful place. Nice, nice. But, um, uh, you know, one of the questions that you had for me uh, mm-hmm. on our first ride was, uh, you know, what to focus on. I mean, how to stay safe in terms of food uh, and uh, stuff. Right. So how did you manage? Uh, well, actually, yeah, that's 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 a good point. I mean, I was I was I was afraid of two things. I was afraid of getting sick 
Because if I'm sick, then the ride is over, essentially. Or yeah. I'm going to suffer a lot. And with 35 degrees, it's like, yeah, if you're sick on top of that, dehydrating, then it's, it's not good. Um, I was afraid of that and afraid of, of dog. Because in Portugal, I got a, I got a few, um, not attacks, but yeah, like dog chasing uh, and then very aggressively coming. So then usually it was one big dog, like very aggressively barking. And then I knew I could handle it and I felt good. Like I know how to handle these situations until this, the day after we rode, when I was going to meet uh, you on Sunday morning, I, I encountered like 20 dogs. <laughs> <laughs> like, pack of dogs. Wow, I cannot handle twenty dogs barking. I don't know what to do. So then, that that's I haven't felt. I I have a dog, so I, I'm kind of dog people, uh, dog person. I'm I I'm usually not afraid of dogs. And I was when these dogs were coming at me in Portugal in the middle of nowhere. I was not afraid. I I felt okay, but when I saw these twenty dogs, it's like oh my god, where am I getting into? So so I was scared of these two things. The dogs actually turned out to be quite fine because uh, I only got chased once. Well, I, a few dogs barked at me, but relatively speaking to the amount of dogs I saw, it was like nothing Yeah. Uh, because there are so many stray dogs and then they are just chilling. Many of them are actually afraid of you. Yeah. So they will just move away. Uh, and just a few uh, barked and just two sprinted me. Um, but besides that, Everything was perfect with the dogs. And the other thing, yeah, was the food. Man, I was just uh, eating where everyone is eating. Uh, the only thing I avoided was the water from um, th mm. that everyone is drinking because Shiva could just stop and in a, any stream of water and drink it. I think I I think most likely I cannot do that. I think I would have, I, for example, I used to do that in Colombia and I was fine, but you know, it's like we're not used to the same water. So I think it I would not have been fine with that. Um, so I just never did it. Uh, and then that seemed to be enough. I was hydrating also with a lot of watermelons and coconut. So, so honestly, it was, it was, it was perfect. I didn't have gladly any issues. Um, no, no dog bites, no, no stomach <laughs> problems. So, so, so like, no, everything went much better than planned in that sense. I was, I was, uh, I was a little bit worried indeed, but, uh, yeah that that's good you know that is that is one thing that i kind of told you as well i guess uh, you know uh, maybe uh, most of the things tend to be waterborne and uh, you know if if food is hot and you know freshly made usually you will be fine mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess that kind of uh, seemed seemed to have worked fine for correctly me. i was i was always waiting to the places that where there was a little bit more people eating it's like well this must be fresh and i was just eating there and yeah i it was difficult to communicate and know what i'm eating sometimes it's like oh man this thing is so spicy it's like even cookies are spicy here it's like <laughs> oh no it's like I, oh finally found cookies then i can just have something normal and man the cookies were spicy it's like no why why the cookies no so but yeah, no, it was it was great. I could find uh, delicious food everywhere. I got very used to it. Um, I, I mean, I love it. So so no, everything everything was was perfect. Nice. Yes. The cookies being uh, spicy, they, they they tend to make uh, you know the spicy versions and the sweet versions. You yeah. have to know which one are which. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, I was feeling this one looks sweet. <laughs> It's like this one. I was like, hoping like for a little chocolate taste. It's like, no man, this is spicy. But yeah, when you're hungry, you're hungry, right? So then everything yeah. tastes good. Nice, nice. Yeah. Excellent. I'm glad that you had a wonderful time here. Yes. Uh, in India. So going back to your cycling in general, uh, you know, how, how often do you ride uh, back home and how... Uh, what is your riding like? Yeah, so so we have this this uh, small group of of friends that are very passionate about kind of adventure cycling. Uh, this is uh, Lausanne Gravel, and this is a very nice group of of humans that are very adventurous, and I like them very much. And I try to belong to this community. We're trying to build this community of people with similar interests. So this means that 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 uh, we all have similar likings on, on the kind of writing and then we get to write fairly often together. So if everything goes as planned, next Saturday we're doing part of something that is called the um, Ride Far organized, it's called Orbit 360. 
and it's going to be a 360 kilometers gravel ride uh, from midnight to midnight essentially wow. for um, right for a reason um, I, it's been a little bit organized while I've been here so I don't have all the details but I'm looking forward to that ride next Saturday um, and, and once summer starts it's like essentially every weekend is a almost a bike packing weekend or or some some a beautiful day in the mountains as long as weather allows so so that's gravel is most of the things i'm doing um i've been changing main my main kind of discipline depending on the place i'm living um but now the easiest for me is road and and, and gravel mountain biking is a little bit more difficult so i don't do so much mountain biking but during the week um i try to do some short rides during the week because i also i have a dog so then um uh, I, I walk a lot with him during the week and during the week is I do the longer rides. So during the weekend, then I will probably stay sometimes in the home trainer um, or do some short rides here and there. But yeah, a few hours during the week and then it could be anything between half a day and full day or two days in the weekends, depending on also on the season. Some uh, winter is a little bit calmer. Nice. Uh, nice. But, uh, but yeah, so but riding is, is <laughs> essentially everything I do when I'm not working. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Nice. So, uh, e e did you kind of, uh, uh, you have been, uh, you know, you have done your PhD and you kind of started uh, riding around that time uh, on a borrowed bike and stuff like that. And you have been working uh, for many years now uh, and regularly riding. Did you find uh, it a bit, uh, uh, did you find any difficulty in managing your passion for cycling and work? No, with work, uh, not really. I mean, with my previous company, it was a little bit different, um, uh, but but not really. I I, I it, when I was living in the south of France, um, it was it was great because I could actually go to my office in my mountain bike. Mm -hmm. So then I would have one hour of single trails to get to my office, wow. climbing through a protected site. So I got to the office and it's like I made my day already. Then it's yeah. like I'm happy to work all day because my before, it, not that I didn't like my job, but it's like already at 9 a.m. I had a beautiful day. Yeah. So then uh, then everything I have is on top uh, kind of. Um, yeah, so 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 it's it was it was it was very nice to be able to do that. And now I also have this this very good balance. I have a, I think I have an excellent employer and then. I have this very good balance between between like personal life and private life and, and work and no no issues. I have the luck also of working with um, with multiple time zones. So from the US to India, China. So that it means that essentially uh, I, I need to cover many time zones, but also that means that I if I I have I can I can easily uh, schedule rides and then just come back and continue working regardless a little bit of the time of the day. So so that's um, that's something that is really compatible. So I'm very, I'm very, I feel very lucky and grateful nice. for that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I, I feel really jealous. And you mentioned that uh, you know you have uh, you used to have one hour of uh, you know co commute through single train, the single track, and you know that that's like ideal dude. You know, I have uh, here is one hour uh, of uh, commute through bumper to bumper traffic i, I somehow <laughs> don't was yeah man I, I i i know i think i feel like it takes a lot of courage also to become a cyclist in in bangalore i understand that because it's it's yeah. not you there is i see that there's there's some friction mm -hmm. there's also the lack of infrastructure and and so so i do see that and i was yeah it was it was very nice i don't live there anymore but uh, but yeah. it was a. Uh, it was a very nice place, but it's good that that you also have you're building this community here of people, and I think this makes it also more meaningful and easier to to get around, right? Like uh, also for some time I was also struggling a little bit, like even though I have these beautiful places next to me, you also want this this community around that because even though they are there, it's like well always uh, it's always nicer to do it with with people and share uh, like this happiness is 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 better when shared, right? So. So, uh, I mean, yeah, there are commonalities there, I think. Definitely, definitely. It is always uh, easier to have company and, uh, you know, of like-minded people, you you get to enjoy life uh, that much better. Uh, also, I mean, actually, we are relatively lucky in Bangalore to have uh, 
a pleasant weather throughout the year mm-hmm. um, and once you get out of the city yeah. the traffic is not that bad yeah correct yeah you know like oh, we, we, were, to this we, we went through he- yes, Sergeta, once you got through the mad traffic yeah. it was just it was beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. peaceful and beautiful uh, yeah, very and calm roads nice yeah. roads so no, i totally agree so so we tend to uh, go start a bit early in the day so that the traffic you know by the time people beautiful. wake up if yeah. <laughs> we are yeah. outside the city yeah. and uh, we so you always start from the city you don't kind of drive and park somewhere and then uh, mostly mostly it's just convenient to you know uh, we tend to i mean at least i tend to uh, live uh, relatively in a place where it is closer to outside of the city mm-hmm. right yeah, so okay. it is it is uh, Easy to easier to uh, get on get out of the city yeah that's really nice people who are living in the heart of the city yeah. have a little bit more uh, you know things to kind of deal with yeah. but uh, yeah you know we we tend to kind of find ways to uh go around the difficulties and enjoy the uh, you know uh, uh, passions that we have for yeah. cycling and sports i mean yeah everything has pros and cons right like you were saying this uh, this pleasant weather all year long in for in europe well winter you you sometimes it's it's, it's hard it's cold it's mm-hmm. uh, you require a lot of a challenge and then also you cannot go very high because there is ice or there is salt if there is no ice and then also kind of the yeah, ice get rusty and so yeah everything is nothing no nowhere is perfect but i think ultimately what matters is that as long as you you, you have you're this classical okay. community and you're you can you're enjoying it's it's life it's outside it's moving yeah. it's breathing so so yeah i think that's the most important beautiful beautiful i'm i'm so glad that you had a great time here um and uh, uh, thank you for uh, taking the time and uh, sharing your experience with the working at lit podcast thank you very much for having me it's been really a pleasure to meet you i think um, i'm really happy that that we got in touch uh um i'm yeah i'm sad that we could only do a couple rides but i'm happy that we continue now meeting today and yeah i'm looking forward to to next time we're riding together so sure. maybe sometime you come to europe Yeah, we can yeah. catch up and do some some kind of writing there and uh yeah it's been really a pleasure talking to you awesome. thank you very much yeah, for all the questions I'm, i'm prob i'm already looking forward to the next time maybe here or uh, me coming to the europe where definitely yeah. they bring awesome. your bike <laughs> yeah. yeah thank you very much that was my conversation with horhe i hope you enjoyed that if you are enjoying this podcast and are finding them useful please consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it on youtube as well as on your favorite podcasting app it really helps thanks again for your continuous support see you next week with another guest